Hello, Trampoline friends. Welcome to Trampoline Insight. I'm Nuno Marino. Alongside Stephen Glutzen today is episode 23. And we are joined by some special and knowledgeable people in USA Gymnastics. That's right. Joining us today is USA Double Mini National Team Coordinator, Chelsea Rayner, and USA Tumbling National Team Coordinator, Becky Brown, with Nuno Marino as the USA Senior Trampoline National Team Coordinator, and myself as the USA Junior National Team Coordinator of Trampoline. And together, we cover all national teams here in the United States. So it hasn't been that long since we talked to each other, but why don't you guys let the listener, listeners know how you guys are doing? Chelsea and Becky, welcome to the podcast. Uh, we're doing really good. I'm about eight weeks back into training, so things are going great here in Phoenix. Nice. Things are great for us, too. We're trucking along. We've actually been training since May, so we're, we're one of the lucky ones who haven't. We were only out like six weeks, so. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. I feel like I was Steven out for has six only been months, out for so. six, six years. So we're good. Yeah, exactly. We just came back a couple of weeks ago. All right. So let's get this thing going. So before we dive into um, each discipline, let's kind of give those listeners that maybe live outside the U.S. or maybe some live in the U.S. and aren't familiar with, you know, our structure. Why don't we start by letting them know um, – how we do things, right? Selecting our national our teams and other new teams, right? So essentially, right now, it's the whole USA is composed of private clubs. Um, we don't have a government funded or even a national team training center currently, although USA Gymnastics is working on that. Um, we've had it in the past at the Caroli Ranch in, in Texas. We were temporarily in the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Um, but right now we're in this, um, new era, new phase coming along where we're changing our structure and cleaning things up a bit and, and, um, doing things for the best. So, uh, Chelsea, Steven, why don't you, Steven, yeah, go ahead. Steven, before you, I, I do believe we have some clubs that are state funded, correct? We have some clubs, for example, I know that for example, right. in Alabama, we have some clubs that are state funded, but most, I would say the majority of them are privately owned. Right. That's correct. And I think, cause I think, um, uh, Fairland in Maryland, I think they correct. have some kind of funding. Um, and I believe Wendy Hillard, um, her gym in New York, and I think she might have one also in, in Detroit now that she, I don't know if they're funded or if they get support, but there's some kind of support from, from their cities and states. Um, all right. So one order for one to become, to get to the national team, Right. So what we're kind of changing the way we do things, right. Touching, grabbing a little piece of history from here and there and putting it all together. So Chelsea, why don't you take us through our, our new pipeline for uh, the next year? Okay. Um, so I'm really excited. We um, just worked a lot over the last probably six months to a year on developing this new pipeline system. So it's going to start all the way at um, level eight for us, um, which is kind of like our first getting into optional level in the United States. Um, so we're going to take some of our younger level eight through 10 athletes and test them on their skills, as well as their physical abilities, their fitness, their flexibility, their strength, endurance, um, plyometrics, things like that. Um, combine those two results, and that will comprise our jumpstart team. So that is our first developmental national team. Um, after that, our age group elite, so our 11, 12s, and 13, 14s, will make our um, elite developmental national team based on their competition results. Um, and then that goes into our junior national team, which is our 15, 16s, and then our senior national team, which is our 17 and up. Um, so really we're going to start introducing our pipeline when they're a lot younger, closer to like the nine, 10 year old age group. So that's really exciting. Some stuff we're coming up with. I think yeah, it's, I'm excited. it's really exciting, especially for, uh, Nuno and myself who have been doing the, some of these, um, developmental clinics or clinics at some pri private clubs. And you see these really talented 15, 16, you know, olds for even 13, 14, even sometimes, younger. but they even don't, they don't sometimes. have, they don't have the development, you know, that they should, and they have so much talent. And, uh, I think it's going to be really exciting for our program to 
get these resources to these athletes at a younger age. Um, and they can learn the structure. And so by the time they're, you know, on the senior national team going to world championships, they're used to it. They're used to the coaches. They're used to working with, you know, their, their teammates from other clubs on the national team. Um, I think it's going to be a really great thing. Uh, I think it's going to take a few years to actually see, you know, the athletes grow through the pipeline and see before it, it's, you know, yielding results, but I'm excited. So Game two. Oh. Go ahead. Go I was going to say, not just, not just for the athletes, though. I feel like for the coaches, like with our old pipeline that we had, like Chelsea and I kind of like grew up together through the old pipeline and then they got rid of it. And so I feel like for the coaches, there hasn't been a developmental pipeline either. So I'm really excited because the more educated coaches we have going through the pipeline, the better athletes that they will produce as well. So I'm excited to see like how that helps the coaches as well, not just the athletes. So I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna say a little bit what, what Becky was saying, because I feel like whenever I moved to this country, the pipeline was still in existence. So Jumpstart was in existence, about to, about to end, I guess. And we're seeing those athletes right now getting into the junior and senior categories. And, they're, and, and we look at pictures from that time and those athletes are there right and on, they start on that pipeline and then it kind of kind of faded away so it's great to it's great i think it's a great thing that we're, we're bringing it back i think i like it yeah i think um what i like the most about jumpstart and you can see it a lot with our younger senior athletes like our um our cadence and our rubens um those kids as they came up through the jumpstart program and it really instilled in them a love of the sport and that heart that I think we're kind of missing with the next generation of kids because they've become so attached to each other, even before Caden and Ruben happened to be at the same gym, but they grew up together. And I think that's helped them stay in the sport a lot longer than the next group of kids. Um, I feel like they don't have as much passion now. Yeah. So and I think like what's kind of unique to about our country, I think it's kind of how our country is, right? Because it's so big that we don't have the luxury of like getting together and training all the time with, you know, like a good group of boys, because how many groups of boys are there that are level 10, age 13, 14, right? Like you're probably the only one in your state, you know? So when you get to go to these developmental camps and you're with five or six other boys that you're like, oh my gosh, there's more people like me and they get excited to build those friendships and it keeps them in the gym longer where you might be losing those kids, you know, at a really early age because they don't have that team to train with. So, so let's go a little bit more into, into detail here. Okay. I think uh, we already saw that we have a pipeline and, and it starts jumpstart EDP, Elite Development Program, and then uh, Junior National Team, Senior National Team. Why don't we go a little bit more in detail? And I know these things are still being worked for next year, but what, what is actually Jumpstart? For, for people from another country, what is actually Jumpstart? What do, they, what do these athletes do? They get tested, we, Chelsea said, they get a test on skills and physical ability, but do they get to meet anywhere during the year? Do they get to go to a camp? Do they get to, who wants to run us through that, that, that scenario for Jumpstart? I can do that. So with Jumpstart, they're going to do a statewide fitness test. So they'll meet with all the athletes within their state to do their testing. If they're maybe the only club in their state, they're welcome to go to a neighboring area to test as long as they only test one time. Um, and then they'll go to nationals. So they'll see their friends there. Then after that, they'll be invited to a training camp um, with the national staff. So actually with the four of us, we'll be coaching them, which is really good because it'll help them kind of learn the ways the system really early on and develop those friendships right away. So as of right now, the Jumpstart team will have one camp opportunity a year. So what comes after Jumpstart? Um, so after Jumpstart, we're hoping that we keep them in for a couple of years. And then as they age and go through the levels, they would be eligible for the EDP program. So right now, level 10 is our highest development non-elite level. And um, if you were a level 10, 13, 14, for an example, um, if you hit a certain score, you would be eligible for EDP rather than jumpstart. So they can kind of have that phase where they're in um, both groups, but then it feeds right into EDP. Once you go into um, our elite program, so if you're 11, 12, or 13, 14 elite, um, then you'll have your EDP program, as well as when you're 13, 14, you'll be eligible for WAGS. And what does EDP gives to them? Um, so EDP will give them one camp also. And then um, 
assuming most of our um, EDP athletes are going to be our top 13, 14, so they'll probably also be our WAGS athletes, and the WAGS kids will typically have a WAGS preparation camp as well as that um, WAGS competition experience. So we're hoping that those kids get to see each other three times in the year on top of their competitions that they took to get to that team. See, that's, that's great. So, so after EDP, they keep developing. What, what's the next stage? So after EDP, when they're 15, 16, they go on to the junior national team. Um, what does, so junior what, national what, team. What, does, what is junior national team for, those that, uh, for other countries that don't have a junior national team? Or what do we do with junior national team? So that is um, our first, I guess you would say, like official recognized um, by USA Gymnastics national team um, that's non-developmental. So those are our 15, 15, 16 athletes. There is an opportunity if you're the very top 14 year old that you can be placed on that team. Um, Those athletes will have two camps on top of their WAGS camp potentially. And then um, we try to give them one other international opportunity. So last year we took the 15, 16 to Spain and then they went to WAGS as well. And we're hoping um, to continue with that as long as it works with our calendar. So they see each other more like four or five times a year in addition to their competitions. And then final step after junior national team comes? Senior national team. So for tumbling and double mini, it's a very similar system to the junior national team. Um, They do a world preparation camp. Um, That would be I think last year we trained in Japan. We were just in a different city before world. So we go an extra week with them. Um, I know trampoline and you guys can elaborate more on this. I think they meet a little bit more often because they have some additional funding, but um, they meet a little more. They do a couple more competitions. And again, we try to give them um, the opportunity to go to a world cup plus worlds, or if they were 17 to 21 and didn't make the world team, they would go on to our WAGS team. Perfect. I think, and, I and think the, that was uh, a very good explanation of, of, our, yeah. of the pipeline, yeah. And the teams, the teams, um, at least the junior teams and the senior teams, I just want to talk on the sizes really quick. So for trampoline, for juniors, there's a maximum of 10 athletes. And then for double mini and tumbling, it's a maximum of, I'm sorry, for trampoline, it's 12. And then for double mini and uh, tumbling, it's 10. And then for the seniors, for double mini and tumbling, it's eight, maximum of eight. And for trampoline, it's a maximum of 10. Um, and they can make those, they can make those teams, the junior national teams and the senior national teams through our domestic competitions. Um, however, there's a, a large weight on our national championships, our USA Gymnastics Championships to make the team there. And then um, almost all of the, the proceed, selection procedures are, completely objective. I think there's maybe one or two spots that are subjective and even still they have to fit into a certain box that we could select them. So um, it's not like some other countries or like even the US that we've done in the past where we get to select the athletes to these teams. They have to earn their spots on their team through competition and only in the developmental teams can they earn it through fitness testing on top of their um, competitions as well. And even with that team, it's pretty strictly result-based. And I think that's probably one of the most positive steps we've made in the last maybe five, six years is really heavily weighing our selection procedures on results. I think it's fair. It works for everyone. And people understand what it's going to be. I agree. I agree. I I think since since I started as a national team, I I, I can't say that everyone understands, but... (laughs) everyone that reads the procedures understands. I think that's a very important right. part because- We still get most, some, uh, yeah. some un- unhappy or upset people. Well, I, I think it's because people still think that things are done like they were in the past and, and, they're, and they're simply not. Everything is significantly more objective. And if people look at, at the papers and that, at, the, at the, the rankings and that and they read the section procedures, they know that things are significantly more objective. All right, so let's start talking So um, Becky's the coordinator for uh, uh, tumbling, Chelsea for double mini, Nuno for senior trampoline, myself for junior trampoline. So let's get a little bit specific to the disciplines here in the United States. So why don't we start with you, Becky, on tumbling. 
what are your dreams for your national team? What do you want to accomplish as a coach? What do you want them to accomplish as a team or one athlete on your team? Um, so why don't you, why don't you share some, uh, um, some insight on that? So kind of one of my goals has been to create like more of a team minded environment. Um, not just, you know, I'm going to worlds. I'm going to do this. I'm meddling for myself. It's more like, what can we do together to, I guess, what can we do to work together throughout the year even to develop that mindset ahead of time so that we're working together as a team when we get to worlds, like we're one team throughout the year. Like, even though you're competing, yes, individually for your club, like there's still a team. And I think trying to create that mindset of let's work together now so that it's like clockwork by the time we get to worlds. And, you know, it's just like the environment that we create ahead of time so that there's, you know, there's that, I guess, respect and understanding amongst them that you are one team, like, you know, that individual medal, yes, it's great, but we are there to get team medals and we're there to work together and, you know, help everybody be successful, not just one person. And that's kind of, I guess, been my ultimate goal is to create that because I feel like for us to be successful, we have to learn to work together a little bit better. And so I guess that's number one. And then my second goal would be um, just creating more depth in our program, because I feel like once we got rid of those pipeline um, programs, I feel like our depth has significantly decreased in the last couple of years. Um, I guess our retention, I should say, not even necessarily depth, but our retention at the, it's just, it's not where it could be. And so I think in order for us to create that depth and that retention, it's really important that we bring back these pipeline groups so that we can start instilling that commitment to them a little bit earlier and that desire and drive a little bit earlier with these kids. So That's awesome. And um, <laughs> what, uh, no, that's, that's, that's really good. And I know you have a, uh, a tough one on your hands, right? Tumbling is, is one of, at least in the United States, it's, it's one of those lower number yeah. events, especially and I think at the elite level. Yeah. A lot of it is because so much of it has been so self-funded in the past, right? It's expensive. It's expensive to travel internationally multiple times a year. And that's one thing our program director has been really great about is helping us with that funding for tumbling and double mini. We've had a lot more support these last couple of years where, um, we've actually, because of, you know, based on their placement, they get a certain percentage of funding, um, for world championships. And then the funding that we get through our state and our region has actually made it so that our athletes have been fully funded for all of our international competitions in the last three years, which has been, I mean, it's been huge. And I think that that's why for like myself, I've had a really good retention with my athletes as well, because, that financial burden isn't there like it has been in the past. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask that if you think that the funding helped with retention. Because oh, I think, I, I think I, so, absolutely. I do think trampoline because we are more funded most of the times, right? We we have the luck to be more funded most of the time. I feel like we were able to re, to retain more athletes. I feel like the group of seniors that we have, it's actually a pretty good group. Maybe not as good as big as I want it to be. I would love it to be bigger, but, and more depth. But I think it's actually a pretty good group of seniors that we have. So I think, I think the funding that's only really because helps. of, uh, I don't, is it the funding though, or is it that Olympics being dangled on the stick, you know, <laughs> at the end that they're always chasing, you know, whereas I don't know if world game gets that same kind of reputation where if it did, maybe more athletes would stick it out, you know, longer to yeah. go to world games or final or medal at world games. Um, but right now, you know, the Olympics gets so much of the spotlight that, um, it might take it away a little bit from from the world games it it does i i, I don't disagree with you but i just think that in the united states there's a, a lot or too much of this mindset people stay for one big meet that they want and then they 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 okay i achieved my 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 lifelong goal i'm like excuse me you went to one one world championships or one wags and you think right. that you did everything there was to do like i did nine world championships nine <laughs> and they were they were two years apart so uh you have so much more to do so much more to give and i feel like that mindset needs to be more yeah. more how do you say it's, more uh, 
more persistent by the coaches on these athletes. You know, these athletes don't know what until the coaches tell them what, what is out there to see. It's a means to an end, right? It's not for them. It's not about the journey and bettering themselves and enjoying it on the way. It's a means to an end. And once they get there, it's done. They did what they do. They did what they wanted to. So Becky. I think a lot um, of that is our culture too, though, don't you think? Yeah. Because like the expectation is like, you graduate high school, you go to college, right? Like you get your degree and then you start working. Like that is like the expectation of a, a child, I guess, right? In our country. And so I think again, with like our state being, or our country being so big, it's like they kind of make that goal ahead of time because they know like if they're not planning on going to a college that has a gym nearby, like they get to, okay, maybe I get to go to one world championship because after that, like, then what, where? you know, like there's nowhere to train because they might be in the middle of nowhere where I think they have the desire, but they don't have like an actual like location because again, our, our country's huge. There's just not the opportunity. Right. Just to give, just to give the listeners kind of a feel, if you don't know how big the United States is. Well, first of all, I just looked up, I didn't know we're the third largest country in the world. Um, I thought we were maybe <laughs> fifth or sixth, but to get from New York to California is a six hour flight. Right. I don't know if you flew, if you flew from London six hours all the way to the east, where in would you Russia. end up? I don't know. Russia, probably somewhere. Throw, um, throw Hawaii in the mix. Throw Hawaii. Think about New York oh, to Hawaii. <laughs> if I'm going to fly to Hawaii, then it's going to take me 13 hours. So Becky, so some of those things that you're talking about, um, you know, building that, that mindset of, of a team, um, how do you, what are some things that you want to do or have done to, uh, attain or implement these things on the, uh, the national tumbling team? Um, one thing that I, I did last year, um, ahead of time was, and I, this, we did this a little late and I wish I would have done it sooner is I kind of had people that I, you know, reached out ahead of time. So like I'd reached out to Alex for tumbling for the men and then hope for the girls. And I just said, okay, our goal is to create this atmosphere and this positive working environment ahead of time. So after um, world selection camp, I had them create a group chat and they were in charge of like every single week, like multiple times a week, it was texting the group, working together, checking on, like in on each other so that they could put a little bit of pressure on each other. And it wasn't coming from me. It was them working together as a group so that they, you know, can kind of build those friendships and build those goals together um, like leading up to world championships. And I, I think it really helped, especially for those young ones who were really nervous and new. They said that they felt going into world championships, like that helped so much because some of these athletes had been competing together for like five years at world championships and they were the new kids and they felt awkward. And so they said, because we created that opportunity for them just to communicate a little bit amongst themselves, that it was a, it was easy. Like it was smooth. It wasn't forced. And they felt like that helped a lot. So that was something just simple that I did, but I think it's even more so just the overall attitude, like it camps at everything. It's like, we are a team. We cheer for each other. You know, there's no, I guess, superstarism. It's just, we're one team, you know, like I know Caden's goal going into, um, into worlds last year, like, yes, he wanted an individual medal, but like the, his goal was he wanted a team medal. And he still says like one of the highlights of his entire career was that moment of being up and knowing like the pressure was on him and that he had to do it for his team, you know, like, and, and I could feel that like as a coach, I could absolutely feel that on the floor, like that desire to do that for those boys. Whereas like for himself, like, I know he wanted it, but I know it was different. I know that he's even said that for him, that was, that was the ultimate like accomplishment. What about you, Chelsea? Tell us a little bit about your dreams for the double mini team. Um, well, to kind of piggyback off of what you and Becky said, I think really um, retention right now is our biggest issue. We have a lot of depth and a lot of success in our double mini program. And it's been successful for a long time. Um, I think our biggest issue is we lose a lot of athletes when they still have a lot to give. We're losing, you know, world finalists that could have easily medaled the next year. We lose, I mean, half of our team 
from this year. I don't know if they're coming back. So I think, um, and I think a lot of that comes down to the expectation to go to college. They're competing when they're 17 or 18 at world championships and you're doing amazing, but you have a lot more to give and they want to go to college or they don't have the money to keep doing the sport if they don't, you know, if mom and dad aren't going to keep supporting them. Um, Can I touch on that really fast, Chels? Just to interrupt you really fast, because I'll probably forget. Like about like the expectation to go to college. I wanted to talk about that for a sec. So there, and I don't think people know like that there are scholarship opportunities. And I think like if people knew more about the scholarship opportunities, they would maybe be a little bit more inclined to stay even. Like we have a scholarship committee and I mean, you guys can probably even elaborate on that a little bit more than I can, but I mean, they can receive scholarships from USA Gymnastics or even like be creative. I know my athlete, Eliza, she actually got a $17,000 scholarship for three years because it was just the scholarship that she applied for. But because she was like a USA national team member, it was like an extra, like out of college, like I don't, or not, I don't even know how to explain it, but essentially because she was doing an elite sport that wasn't part of the university, they had a specific, a specific scholarship for her. So because she was a USA national team member, she got a huge scholarship for three years, like $17,000 per year. Like that's a huge scholarship, you know? And so I think think that people don't realize like that you get to use those opportunities of being on USA national team to apply for scholarships and to, you know, like it helps you. And even though maybe you're not getting a scholarship to college, you are getting a scholarship for college. If you continue flipping. And and I think, I'm sorry, Chelsea, I'll give give you back the, I'll give you back the floor in one second, but I think that that was, that was spot on because I still have conversations today of people that want to quit and go to cheer just because of scholarships or go to diving just because of scholarships. And they don't Mm -hmm. know that USA gymnastics gives scholarships every year States and regions give scholarships, yeah. scholarships every year. And then there's still those opportunities that you just talked that most people don't even know about. It's, a, it's just a matter of, of trying to find more information because in the end, maybe we're not fully funded like other sports, but we can, we can manage pretty well with those scholarships coming from everywhere. I went yeah. to, I know the, the scholarships from USA Gymnastics paid for just about 75% of my schooling. So I graduated with no debt and no outside scholarships, just the grants that USA Gymnastics gives. That's um, amazing. So, so, and I think like if we can educate parents about that, and I know that was something that I did in my personal club was I'm like, this is, these are the opportunities and they've taken full advantage of it. And I really think that it helps. Like if people know that that's available, you know, we just have to do things like this to get it, the word out yeah. so that people exactly. know. <laughs> exactly. So Chelsea, continue on the expectation or what, the, where, you, where you were broken. Yeah, I just, I just wish we had um, a little more, opp- like just more retention, basically. We're, we have a couple athletes that have stuck around for a long time and they've really helped um, our team succeed. Um, but for the most part, I think maybe 50% of the athletes return from one world championship to the next at the most. Um, so that would be like, you know, if I had a magic wand, here's enough money, you can stay until you can't stay. Um, and then just working um, with the team on like inclusivity, like really working together and supporting each other and allowing everyone to be a part of the team and to support that, like Becky said too, just, being one team, being united. I think at world championships this year, uh, the team did a really good job of that. I think um, so too. It, and I think the biggest thing at Worlds this year was the whole entire team came Last together. Year. Last year. Uh, yeah, sorry. The one okay. in Tokyo. Um, <laughs> it's okay. 2019. The, the, yeah, I don't even know. 2020 what, doesn't does anyone count. Know what day it is? What month are we in? How many days has COVID been happening? I don't know anymore. <laughs> Um, but 2019 Worlds, the whole team really came together and worked together as a team. And so that was really fun. And I think we're starting to see just some of the fruits of our labor with everything we've been working on as a national staff starting to really come together. And I was, and, and was going to uh, talk a little bit about that because although I, I, I wasn't able to be hundred percent involved with the U S national team at worlds. I saw a lot of things that were implemented, like you, um, 
the games at the end of each meal and and uh, uh, just little things that allow them to connect more and know more about each other and then in the end they just become stronger it's as simple as that yeah. because they 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 the moment they they lose that um, uh, and I'm missing the word now that that fear of of communicating with other persons and those games allow them to interact interact with the word the moment they they allow to interact more with everyone then it's those bonds create easily because they have similar goals so it's easier to connect and to to empathize with each other so we just need to create little doors and they will walk through them and I think that's exactly what I saw on, on, on Worlds last year, that's exactly what I saw. Camp, prep camp and Worlds, those little games and, and the uh, group activities and make sure that we are all with the same goals. I think that was phenomenal. Yeah, I think it, it seems so silly, but we've been doing these group activities and games at every camp for the last couple of years. And I feel like it's made a big difference just with the kids demeanor because it can also be they're putting a lot of pressure on themselves they're stressed it's obviously like a high intensity environment especially training camps where they're really just taking a lot of turns and their bodies are beat up but to have something at the end of every training or at the end of every night where they can let their guard down and just still be a kid i think has helped a lot with the team as a whole So, so uh, what about you, Nuno? What's your um, your dream for for senior trampoline? What do you what do you see, right? If, what what's what does success uh, a successful national team look like to you? Well, uh, honestly, we, we already discussed a little bit of what what I believe as well. But I think I think I really would would like a national team that has a lot of depth, just like Betsy, Be Becky said. I think that's important because when we have four athletes or even three athletes that know that they will always be the ones representing us internationally it, it they will never be competitive enough for us to get better so we, we we really need more athletes at the same level competing with each other for those four spots that go that go internationally and, and that's i'm seeing that a little bit i'm still not where we're not even close to where, where i would like to be obviously i would like that those athletes would be fighting uh, for podium at the Olympic Games. That going to the Olympic Games would not even be uh, a concern for us. And it's still a concern, unfortunately. The qualification is still a, con a concern, right? I would like to get to the point where the qualification, we know that we're going to qualify. We just need to focus on taking the best athletes so we can reach a podium. That's, that's my dream. Now, how are we going to achieve that? I think, I think Becky and Chelsea said, said it all, you know. We need to work together. We need to work together, put all the minds working together and decide what's the best strategy to go to get there. Simple as that. I think we've been doing a little bit more these three years that we've been working together, two and a half that we've been working together. I think we are accomplishing that, but we still have other people that need to be involved in the process. We have great minds in this country that, that we need to collect their knowledge and get better with it. Does that make sense? I hope, I hope I'm hope i being clear on, on, on how I'm explaining. I feel like everyone does things differently and sometimes the outcome is the same. So we need to try and, and, and collect all those different methods and try to get to the best that works for our culture. Because I think the United States have a very particular culture. They're very different from other countries. So I think the the way or the strategy that is applied needs to be very particular as well, right? And I think that's what we've been doing, honestly. Uh, we're already talking when we already started two and a half years back, right? So we already see a little bit of result of what we've been, do what we've been doing, I think. Uh, we do, all four of us do a lot of clinics and we see these athletes with different technique with different drills in their in their in their brains, and I and I and I enjoy that. I think we still need more, but I enjoy that. Whenever we go to a clinic, we ask for a one and three, and they actually tell me that they can do a one and three instead of the oh, I learned my half hour into the pit when someone said up. Oh. I'm like, okay, it always. <sighs> so, so so, what are some things that you think that um, we can implement to have this depth? um that you're that you're looking for well i think i think the first thing we are already doing it it's being objective in our selections 
because I feel like the way it was in the past, people felt uh, an un, unjust, injustice. It was unfair to them. In, injustice. 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 <laughs> right? They felt yeah, but I would like the word when they felt injustice towards them, right? They they it's they they never knew how things were being how the selections were being made. They always thought the same people would get it all the time, right? And I think we changed that. We changed that and we see new kids and new faces every year now. And I like that. I think that's point number one. Because if people feel that the system is working for them and not against them, they enjoy being in the system. The second, like we talked today, is funding, right? If they don't have to sell their house and their car and everything so they can participate in the competitions, then they will most likely be here if they're supported, right? But we don't have funding for everyone. So we need to try and do the best we can. But I think that's some of the things that we already been doing for this debt to happen, okay? And then the most important of all, it's coaches' education. Oh, you read my mind, you know? I know. <laughs> I know. I I'm but sorry. I feel like we've been doing a good job with that, right? Like with the nuggets of knowledge. And I mean, I think, again, there's still so many people who don't know about the nuggets of knowledge. And so I think just somehow getting us to communicate and getting that communication out to the other coaches, I, I don't think know that that's available. I don't disagree, but I still don't think it's enough. No, I don't think it's we enough. I think a, we need more. I, I we just had like five or six round tables scheduled before COVID. Um, <laughs> But, you know, we had uh, every nationals, I did one or two round tables. We were doing them at camps. And I think um, one thing that we've also all been really big on is opening the lines of communication. And that hasn't always been um, the strong suit in our country with leadership. And I think um, our program director has done a really good job with that as well. Um, but I think that's also the biggest thing is allowing coaches to feel comfortable going to the national staff or going to committee members or committee chairs to ask questions helps with the coach's education. Cause I know when Becky and I were coming up some, I wouldn't go up to certain clinicians at national team camps and ask questions. Cause I would feel like an idiot. Um, so I think that's another thing that we've been doing to help with the education process. I, agree. I think there's I agree. even been more, there's even more than they know about. Right. So like, if you look at the National Congress for Artistic, there it's sold out, right? I, I've presented at Congress, I think this will be my third year, and there's maybe 20 people from TNT, right? I have people from Artistic showing up to my TNT um, presentations because they want to learn about, you know, how to implement use, uh, using a trampoline or double mini or a rod floor in their, in their, their gym. And it's a shame because there's hardly any TNT coaches out there, you know, and, and do they want the education, right? Or is it, is it because it's, it's not there? Cause I feel like there's ways, there's outlets, there's platforms, you know, for the education to get there. I just don't necess know necessarily if the coaches in trampoline and tumbling in USA are as, are as hungry as maybe as they are in artistic in USA. And, and I agree with that, but the, so let me give you my opinion about Congress. Okay. I think Congress is, Fantastic. It's a great tool, but not all the coaches are allowed to go to Congress. Not all coaches can just leave the gym to go to Congress. Okay. And I can tell you that right. in the past, I was not able to do it. Maybe now that I own my own gym, I could probably do it, but uh, not, it's very, it's very hard when you already have to leave so much for competitions, then you still ask for three or four days to go to, to Congress just to be a better coach. Many gym owners do not understand that. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I beg to differ because a lot of gym owners sometimes pay people to go to Congress and to, to further educate themselves and then bring what they learned back to their gym to better their rec program, better Those their are, preschool program, better their are the good program. gym owners. Those are the good gym owners, but not all or the, the ones owners that also. have money. <laughs> or the ones that have money. Because I would love to send all my coaches, but let's be real. <laughs> exactly. But I think another thing, it's, it's just, it's just too easy to be a, to be a coach. You, you pay a membership of ninety five dollars. That it is an annual membership. You do a, a, a safety course, and you can be on the floor of every meet, and you do the T two ten. I just think there needs to be a, a more a, a bigger certification program. You know, even and and I saw this online. You know, I, I, I actually I, I'm not going to say the name of the person, but I saw a comment like this. 
should I allow USA Gymnastics to tell me or to teach me anatomy and to teach me psychology and all those things after I learned all this in college? People can just get equivalents. Like we, we do that in Portugal, you know, you bring your diploma from your, from your college. If you study this, then you get that, that, that uh, certificate for that degree or for that level done. You don't have to redo it again if you already did it. But how many coaches do we have that they don't even know the bones that are in our, in, in our body? That's basic for me. I'm sorry, right? You have an athlete in front of you. You need to know the bones and the muscles that are working at that, at that moment in time. And we have a lot of them that don't know, unfortunately. I think that's something we need as an institution. We need to try and, and, and work and try and work with them, right? And our educational system in USAG is a little backwards because it's more like, um, oh, you've been to this meet? Okay, you're this level coach. Instead of you need to do X amount of education hours to become this level to be allowed to coach this there level of meet. So it's more like, Oh, you showed up. Okay. You're that level coach. Um, but, and, and now, okay. And now I'm going to be a little bit of devil's advocate. Okay. Because it's not so easy. And like Becky said, this is a huge country. Okay. And I think that's the biggest problem of this country is that it is a huge country. And sometimes to get these coaches in a place to give them education, it's not so easy. So all these things need to be prepared online in a way that they can still learn. It's not so easy. It really is not. Well, the great thing is now we're all Zoom pros since COVID, so we can all educate coaches via Zoom since <laughs> this well, is our new normal. <laughs> and that goes with what Chelsea said, right? I think the lines of communication were significantly open. I think, I, I feel like I have a lot more coaches approaching me and I see that happening to you guys as well. And coaches are, are, are feel more welcome to come and ask questions and to come and, 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 and show and send videos. Oh, look at this, look at this skill. What do you think? Or look at this routine. What do you think? Well, should I build it differently, right? I feel like that line of communication is open now. So people are more than welcome to just learn. Absolutely. And there's also on the USA Gymnastics um, TNT uh, page, there's a list of mentors and uh, gyms that you can reach out to that are people that have had experience or are willing to share their, their knowledge for free. That you literally, there's a phone number right there and I think an email and you can reach out to them and um, ask for we'll, help. We'll link and, that in the, we'll link that in the, in the, in the description below so you guys can, can get it. So then let me, let me jump to, to what I see or what I hope for the junior national team. And then we can get on to the next, our next topic, the code of points, uh, the upcoming code of, code of points. So being a, a junior national team coach, it's kind of weird because it's still in a developmental phase. So it's, there's not really end results that I, that I am looking for, but what I, a few things that I'm looking for to implement and build into our national team is most, number one, I don't, maybe not most importantly is confidence, right? So I want these athletes to be able to get to worlds and you see these other countries jumping high and falling but they're going for it. They're confident. They're trying, you know, you don't see them saluting and with their tail, you know, tucked between their legs. They're out there. They're confident. They're trying their absolute best. And I, and I don't know if we can say that our athletes compete to their fullest potential. Some athletes, absolutely hundred percent. Some, no, some are in the middle, right? We have a mix. I'm not putting anyone into a bubble. Um, but as an average, as a whole, that's, I feel like we have as a country cannot have not in trampling competed to our fullest potential. And I think a lot of that is due to confidence. Um, and then secondly, I want to build that same camaraderie that the athletes, uh, know each other for a long time are familiar with the, working with each other, but I want to build competition between them. And I want that competition to be friendly competition, right? I want someone to send a message to, hey, Bob, check out this routine I just did today. It was a 14-6. I finally put my Triffis in. And then Sean's going to say, oh, man, coach, look, Bob just sent me this video. You know, we need to work. And basically, it's kind of getting a national center, if you will, where they can see each other training um, just in their own personal clubs. Um, well, I want to tell I you, had... Stephen, that I sent Chelsea my routine 16-0 yesterday, and she didn't care. So, I don't know. <laughs> I said point you your toes. 
No, but I was hoping that you would do a seventeen one. Come on. I think you. I think uh, you moved the decimal. I, did my 17 I think it was one last week. One. I think your routine was one point six, not sixteen point zero. I think you maybe missed a, a decimal <laughs> placement. Maybe. It was that level um, two routine you sent me for the JO code. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> And some of some of and this is I'm just kind of uh, saying some some really quickly here so we can 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 move forward. I have m many more goals, but one of the things that I wanted to create was a platform where the, there was uh, communication and um, not just open communication where you talk, but also a difficulty board, a time of flight board where they can post their highest times and their highest routines and they can see it and start competing with each other. Um, however, due to lack of funding, right, because to hold that website uh, costs money. And then also because of some safe sport things, depending on who can access that information, who can communicate, we've kind of had to run into some problems there as well. But that's one of my dreams is to have that platform that those athletes can see each other and push each other on a daily or weekly basis. Because let's get real, a lot of athletes are elite at the only elite athletes of their level in their gym and they don't have, you know, that other competitor pushing them. Um, all right. So let's jump to the new code of points. Uh, I guess we'll go full circle over here back to you, Becky. Um, what are some of the things in the new code of points that you think will benefit the tumblers and not benefit the tumblers? Um, okay. So I think with the new code of points, um, so I guess for those of you who aren't quite aware, so there's several changes. They're not allowed to repeat doubles. So like in the past, you'd be able to go like whip double layout to a back handspring double layout, or like for the men, for example, they would go round off double layout whip one double layout, you know, to a double pike or a triple. So there's no repeating skills anymore. So I think for athletes who maybe don't have a lot of depth in their skills, it's going to actually hurt them, you know, because for example, I know like Caden does not have a full out where Zeke does. So Zeke could essentially do a pass with a full in a full out to a Miller where Caden wouldn't have that option because he doesn't full out, you know? And so I think it, there's going to be pros and cons depending on like your athlete. If you have, if, it, it would be a pro, I guess, um, for those athletes who are really can do every single skill in the book because they're pretty much going to need it if you want a three double pass where um, I guess it would be, sorry, I'm kind of like jumping around, but trying to organize my thoughts, but it would maybe be a disadvantage to somebody who doesn't have a wide variety of skill option. Um, and I'm not saying that one, one of my athletes doesn't, but that's kind of the full out example is I guess my biggest one, because we just never worked that skill because he didn't like it. We didn't need it. There was no point. It kind of messed with his head where if I would have known this was going to happen, I would have forced it a little bit more when he was, you know, 14 years old and fighting and fighting and fighting. But, um, I guess that's something that I would recommend and I'll go get into that later, like really working those where I guess, for other athletes, now that you're not going to have like the full to full requirement, that could definitely benefit some athletes. Like if you're not a great twister, for example, you're not necessarily going to have to have that full in the middle of your pass. You know, you have a little bit more options as far as how you can play and put your pass together. So I guess my recommendations and things that I am doing and changing in my gym is definitely for all of my like developmental kids, I am working full in and I'm working full out. Um, that's where I, I really have, haven't done that a lot in the past, just because I know some athletes really struggle with, you know, putting both of those on the floor at the same time. It just kind of messes their brain because it is so fast, but um, that's definitely something that I'm working. And also for like the transitioning for my girls, that's something that I am doing right now with my junior girls is, they are learning full out so that the, by the time they're a senior, they can, you know, transition that full out to a full in. Um, just because, again, I think a full out's a little bit easier for the girls to transition than the full in straight. So um, 
And then for the men as well, that way they can have like a round off full in straight to a whip one full out straight to essentially a Miller so that they have more options as far as putting like a three double pass together, if that makes sense. Sorry, that kind of skipped around a little bit, but so right. pros and cons, I think, I mean, I guess there's some to both. If you're a really great twister and not a great flipper, great. You don't really have to do a straight pass anymore, <laughs> you know, but I think it's also going to limit a lot of athletes with the three double passes. So that's kind of, so what are you, what are your recommendations to coaches um, going into this new, this next quarter? Is it still a quad if it's only three years? Trip, triple year? <laughs> the try something. Try. Yeah. Try. Um, I guess my recommendation. So it would be, for the developmental ages, I wish I, I wish I knew what other countries were going to do because also like for the developmental ages, you can full like you could a whip. So full, you can repeat fulls down the floor. So you may end up seeing like five fulls to a full in, you know, which would add two and a half points of difficulty to your score essentially. So I, I would say work the fulls, <laughs> the bounding fulls, because you could see a lot of that next year. I personally am not just because my goal is more to get those kids transitioning instead of falling down the floor. So that's not really, I guess, my goal. I'm definitely pushing the transitions a little bit earlier. Um, that's something that I've started working a little bit earlier with my athletes. Um, but as far as goals, I would really start working a lot of the scale, like your skeleton timers to different end skills, because now they don't have to go just a double layout to a double pike, right? They can do a double layout to a full and pike and then a double pike to a double tuck or, you know, they just, their options for the girls, I feel like are a little bit, I feel like the girls difficulty is probably going to increase a little bit where the men might decrease a little bit because they may have less options if that makes sense. So I don't know, at least for my personal team, that's what I'm seeing, but. Gotcha. All right. So you're up next, Chelsea. What are some things that double mini uh, athletes in the U S well, I guess double mini athletes in the world, really, what do you think will benefit from and what will hurt them in this next um, code of points? Um, well, I'll, I'll start with, I don't think it's a secret, but I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically everything about it. Um, I just think it's a little bit dangerous because, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, double many did do the same thing as tumbling where you can't repeat an element at the senior level. I don't really see that being a huge issue, but you only need two passes now. Um, so we're going to see a lot of, and there's actually one less execution score. So um, I think most people that follow double mini know it's really difficulty, 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 landings, execution. Execution is kind of bottom of the barrel, and now that's going to be even more so. Um, so I think you're going to see a lot of big passes. Um, and the way that the, um, the qualification one, qualification two, final one, final two works. I think you might see a lot of like changing passes on the fly because there's going to be a lot of strategy involved in that system. So for me, I don't like it because I think it's going to get a little boring because you'll either see a lot of the same passes and then you'll start seeing, oh crap, I better Miller plus now and I didn't really warm it up because so-and-so did this and I have to beat them or I'm not going to make it to the next round. Um, and it'll probably be ugly. <laughs> That's so I don't, to me, though. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Um, so what I would have liked to see, and this is unpopular opinion, is I would have liked to see time of flight on double mini. Um, a lot of people disagree with me, and I think that it would take some data to kind of see how that would fall I agree into with play. You. But I, I, I love the very flight, flight double, double mini system, and I think um, – if you could run some numbers, I think that's something they should consider for the next quad because my biggest concern with the two E scores on double mini is that they wanted to kind of, and Nuno, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the impression I got was that they wanted to match trampoline a little bit. 
And the issue with, with the two E-scores, and the issue with that is that when you took the E-score away from trampling, you replaced it with another technical score. So you added HD in. They didn't do that on double mini. Um, that's correct. So that's, that's my main concern with that. Um, so I think what it'll be good for um, is I think the women will push their difficulty a little more, um, which is probably good because a lot of the girls will play it safe and use that execution. Um, and girls are typically a little less likely to go to the dangerous level. Um, but I think, I think the first year will be interesting. Um, you know, I'm curious to see if Zolomon does the Zolomon a lot next year, um, or if he just goes, nah, I don't need to. But uh, I don't know, I don't see a ton of benefit to it, except for maybe, um, some of the like junior boys going senior for the first year, they may not have as many skills. So it'll be nice for them to only have to utilize two passes because they can put a little more difficulty together. Um, especially if they haven't grown, they may not be big enough going into their first year senior to do a lot of the trips or trip pikes. Um, you know, most of them, most of the little boys can't do that with the exception of Ruben, but he's not human. So, um, I think that'll be what it's good for. It's first year senior men um, pushing difficulty for them. But I think what it's not going to be good for is those already a little bit scary boys. <laughs> so, so I, I think you. for for trampoline for trampoline and uh, I'm I'm on the other hand I'm excited for these new cutoff points. Uh, I do understand Chelsea's concerns on double mini. There are some things on double mini that. Um, I wish they would have been done a little bit different, but the committee decided as, as a whole that way. So it was what was approved. But for trampoline, I think for those that do not know, you sh athletes will have uh, two free turns, three 10 skill routines, and the best one will count uh, for individual score. For the team score, it's still being decided. It's still under discussion there. It might be the sum of both routines, or it might be the worst. There's, there are some certain things still being discussed, but I think it's going to allow a lot of strategy for the individual game. I think so. Because if you have athletes that are consistent, they, consistent, they most likely will do a consistent turn on the first, and then they'll try something harder, and they'll try for a higher score. For other athletes, they might try their normal routine crash and then try something a little bit uh, lower just to have a score or try the same routine. So I think it's going to play a little bit more with that. Uh, at the same time, and um, I know we still have one year. I think it's important for people to understand this is not for 2021. It's only starting on 2022. So we still have one more year with the current rules. But I really wish the U.S. would start working on, on higher skills because with one routine, 10 skills, that difficulty level is going to increase. People are going to put the skills that they had on compulsory previously and bring them on to optional again. And uh, we'll, I believe we're going to see full front halves and root yard trips on the same routine easy so that means we need to start working right now we have i don't want to i don't want to say a wrong answer but i think at nationals last year we had two athletes starting with rudra trip that was it so we need to push 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 for a little bit more because whenever we have only one routine 10 skills we need more dd there and consistency on that dd that's what i wish yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a big change. I think a lot of these things that we're we're talking about and thinking about, we're gonna see the world go maybe this way and then change, and it might. Everyone's wondering what the strategy strategy is going to be, and everyone, a lot of the countries across the world, kind of feed off of other countries, right? What are, what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? You know, so I feel like it's gonna go a bunch of different ways before we kind of find a, a middle ground of where the next four, eight, 12 years are going to go with the sport. Um, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be tough for the juniors because I think the juniors are already going to be getting ready for the senior team. So they're, they're thinking I need 20 skills, 20 doubles. Right. So I think naturally we're going to see an increase in, in difficulty trickling down through the junior elites into the youth elites, um, which 
could hurt time of flight, could hurt execution, right? So I think it's, I think as a whole, I think we need to still remember that in trampling these athletes can bloom late and learn late um, and that there's no need to rush this process just because the highest level is getting a little more difficult, right? And I think what we're also going to see is the veterans are going to be taking control. Whereas sometimes in our sport, the 17, 18 year olds come in, guns are blazing and give the old guys a run for their money, right? However, now, you know, a 17 year old, it's 18 year old might not have full front half, Triff Rudy out, um, Miller plus, Full and Rudy, right? The skill set that you kind of acquire over your senior elite development. So, um, unless you're Ruben. I think it's, Unless, unless, unless you're always unless you're Ruben. Ruben. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's going to be exciting, you know, and I think it might get more challenging for those freshmen and freshmen in college that they're, you know, maybe they would stick around if they'd make the senior national team their first year. And I think it might be a lot less likely. However, it gives them a lot more incentive to stick around longer right that the success doesn't come at 17 at your first worlds and then you're done the success comes later on at the worlds after you acquire more skills all right that is just a little bit over an hour um is there anything anyone else wants to throw in before we wrap things up anything that we missed so i i just uh, think it's important for for everyone you know to keep this line of communication open how to reach becky how to reach chelsea what's the best channel facebook messenger whatever you prefer whatsapp i think it's important hey becky gonna... how can so becky where are you from and how can people reach okay. you is, is is would facebook probably the best the best option right um yes facebook is a great option um my Facebook, it's Becky Brown, and I can try to hold this up to the screen. <laughs> this is my Facebook contact. You with your picture. beautiful nice. family. And where, and you, where are you from? And, and where I'm are you from, from other yeah, we're from gyms. Salt Lake City. Our gym is in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, yeah. Nice. And what, what about you, Chelsea? Where, where are you at, and how can people reach you? Um, I am in nice and warm Phoenix, Arizona. Um, you can reach me on Instagram. It's Chelsea Rayner um, or Facebook. It's Chelsea Rayner. I'll copy Becky. Got the screen. <laughs> you the and your beautiful kid. family. You guys are so cute. <laughs> Steven, join the party. <laughs> All right, so, Have a kid. Uh, I just got a puppy. So puppy, puppy will do for now. All right, Stephen, All right. how can people reach you? All right, so I am in um, central New Jersey, so anyone in the tri-state area uh, or Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, um, Delaware, if you guys want to drop in, you can always uh, reach out to me and feel free to come watch or participate in our trainings. And you can reach me on Facebook at Steve Gluckstein, or you can reach me on Instagram, my handle's at Steve Glucks, or you can reach me via email, stevengluckstein at gmail.com. Um, and Nuno, lastly, how can people lastly, reach you? Where are you at? The last, last but not least. The first, so we're, we're perfect. So yeah, I live in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, our doors are always open as well. If you want to come and train with us, uh, we do several camps a, a year, but you do not have to come on those dates. You can come on whenever you want. And the, probably the best way to reach me is Facebook, uh, Nuno Enrique Marino, or even uh, uh, email nhmarino at gmail.com. And that's probably the best ways. But you can always reach us here on the podcast if you need it, me or Steven, and we'll put you in contact with Becky and Chelsea. Easy peasy. And how does one, and how does one spell Enrique? Enrique. <laughs> H-E-N-R-I-Q-U-E. I'm just busting your chops. All right, okay. guys. Well, Becky and Chelsea, thank you very much for joining us and shedding some light on your goals and your thoughts about the code of points and your national teams. So thank you. Um, a future thank you for all you will do over the next coming years. And once again, we, we appreciate you coming on here. 
And we hope some people reach out to you guys very sh uh, shortly. So we'll see you guys soon and hopefully, well, maybe not soon enough. And hopefully everyone listening will get to see you guys at a, at a competition or camp soon as well. Bye guys. Thank, Thank you. you for Bye. Your Thanks time. guys. That concludes our conversation with USA national team coordinators, Becky Brown and Chelsea Rayner. We hope you enjoyed learning about them and the information that they had to share. Does your team or country do things differently? Do you agree or disagree with our vision? Let's start a discussion. Why don't you start by commenting below, or you can shoot us an email at trampolineinsight at gmail.com. You can also reach out to us on Twitter at Tramp Insight or on Instagram at Trampoline Insight. You can also send us a voice message with questions or opinions by following the link in the episode description. We'll play it on the podcast and answer it if it's a question. Thank you guys for listening. We can't wait to see you guys on the next episode. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your trampoline friends. Bye, guys. See you soon.